<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm your host, Adam Steele, and joining me this week is my my co-host, Liam Wright. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello I'm back. Good stuff. This is our weekly podcast with guitar news, music tech news, and general waffle about the uh, the guitar and music industries. And Indeed. we yes, we have lots of news, big and small, this week. Uh, the new Cubase is coming out, as it inevitably does. Uh, there's a tiny little recorder from Zoom, which I think I might get one of because they're tiny. Um, Apple's new um, laptops have been benchmarked, and apparently they are fast. Uh, by by benchmarking tools that favor them. Sure. Apparently. Apparently. According to one guy on Reddit, sorry. <laughs> Let yeah. me clarify that. <laughs> yeah. Benchmarking tools that somehow favor Apple, despite the fact that this is brand new hardware. Uh yeah, they were talking about the 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 way that Apple's uh, I, I could bring up the post, but essentially all OS based stuff, um, they're they're oh. benchmarking basically this by their the geek benches the people that have done it like yeah for by them an iPhone is uh, an iPhone ten nine nine apparently has a better CPU than um a ninety nine hundred K. Ah, uh, so it leans towards Apple's strengths, right? Yeah. Okay. But single core processing, non like scientific, non real world analysis, which everyone's used to when it comes to benchmarking stuff, like those things um, taken into account, and you can kind of understand it. It's like you got to take it with a pinch of salt to a degree, though. Mm, indeed, you do. All this and more coming tonight after the intro. This is the Hot Pole Podcast. Yes, just like a real podcast, everybody. <laughs> so, how are you? Um, I'm getting my laptop back. Apparently, scans say it's not broken. So, we'll see about that. Um, so I'll be uh, I'll be happy when I have my computer back. That'll be good. Mm. Um, busy as always. Um, 2020 just yes. keeps coming it does but, indeed. You know, we do what we do what we can to keep going yes, um we, we i unfortunately on. do not have a bright lego uh hoodie i was very very jealous watching last week oh of, yes uh, henning that was epic henning's got some amazing like hoodies i'll have to send you a link to the mr goo goo store which is where he gets all of his uh crazy crazy jumpers because well, it reminded me of i don't even remember you um i've still got it somewhere um I've got one that's kind of similar, but with like stereos on it in all different colors. It's like a zip up one I used to wear quite a bit. Mm. Um, so it reminded me of that. So I was like, yeah, yeah, completely I mean, garish hoodies are awesome. Yeah. While while I was at Henning's place over the summer, I borrowed one of his jumpers one night, and it had kind of a statue of David uh, with a horse's head. <laughs> it's absolutely bizarre. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's got some interesting apparel. Let's put it that way. But yes. Um, it's uh, it's been another busy week here and I've decided that I am going to be having a week off next week uh, apart from the podcast of course and apart mm -hmm. from I'm going to be well starting at the end of tomorrow I'm going to be in the studio tomorrow because I'm making more cabinets for the two notes store right now which is going to be interesting I've just captured a 3 by 10 base cab yes that's right 3 by oh. 10 weird um, I'm in the middle of capturing another 8x10. Um, what else? I've just got myself another uh, oversized Marshall cab with different speakers. I'm going to be speakering to death. Uh, so I've got lots, um, lots, lots to do. There's more, yeah, there's more cabs and speakers in the uh, in the hallway for you, actually. Is there? Yeah, some Zilla, like three boxes came from Zilla. Oh, fantastic. I wasn't expecting them till tomorrow um and yeah a big heavy box of stuff from celestian which i think you've seen already yes the, the, so yeah i've got more speakers from celestian so i've been talking for a long time about 
Uh, a lot of people who watch the channel have seen all the speaker comparisons that we did a couple of years back, and I'm planning to revisit it and make the most epic speaker comparison video. So Celestia and I are kind of getting involved this time and sending me some more speakers, so I've got pretty much the entire collection. So not including yeah, ones that like... There's a lot of speakers down there. Yeah, there's a lot. So it doesn't include ones that are like, out of print so to speak you know discontinued models but for everything they actually mm -hmm. make i've got almost one of each now and i'm gonna hunt for the rest before mm -hmm. i uh, get going the new zilla hernia <laughs> yes are any of those ones from zilla absolutely huge no right okay so he's not finished my six by 12 which is fine no that's absolutely Unless... fine yeah, unless there was one that it was weird. It was two. There was definitely cabs, and then there was one which was a lot lighter and slightly squishier. So unless he's just turned it into sawdust and put it into a box for you, squishier. <laughs> uh, he did send say he was sending me a couple of uh, slabs of rock, which rock. could yeah. Uh, oh no no. So the the small squishy one will be. He's made me a tiny little one by ten, but yeah, he said he's going to send me uh, a couple of slabs of actual rock to put underneath my speakers. But you would have known All if it right, was that because you'd pick it up and go. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, yeah, it wasn't heavy. So. Yeah, no, he's made me a little mm -hmm. one by ten speaker that's about this big. So mm -hmm. it's it's like if a speaker's ten inches wide, the whole cabinet's like eleven inches wide. It's tiny. <laughs> but yeah, you you put a guitar solo through it, and those things sound amazing. So I thought, yes, I'd like one of those, cool. please, Paul. <laughs> So yeah, that's all going into the video, which I'm going to be scripting over the next few weeks, producing so that hopefully it's ready either by Christmas or just after. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a lot going into the production of that. So that's going to be on the burner for a while because that's not the kind of thing that I want to rush out. That's going to be the kind of video that people will come back to for hopefully years. So hmm, fingers mm -hmm. crossed. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Yes, indeed. And I've had a few more little deliveries this week. I've just had a new set of bass pickups arrive from Lindy Fraylin. Because my, Ooh. yes, my number one bass, the jazz bass, wasn't quite making the sound that I want. So I'll put those in. Uh, I have another bass that's in the shop at the moment. So that's getting dark glass uh, tone capsule in there. Focus, camera focus. <laughs> it just says dark glass anyway. There we go. There so you go, that helped you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the dark glass tone capsule is going in a base made entirely of maple, which is beautiful. What was the other thing that arrived? There was one more. Oh, yes. This is going to be a lot of fun. This is a Raspberry Pi 400. This is the thing that just came out. I jumped on that. So that keyboard is the Raspberry Pi. Right, yeah. I thought that. I saw you post it on Instagram, I think. Yes. Yeah, so I posted that yeah, earlier today. Because... Um, uh, a couple of years ago, I made a video around the time that Ivy was born about trying to do audio production on a Raspberry Pi. It's technically possible, mm -hmm. but they weren't very powerful with the Pi 3. Uh, the Pi 3 had one gigabyte of RAM, and I think it was a one gigahertz ARM processor. This mm -hmm. thing in here is over twice as fast and has four times the memory. So mm -hmm. that should mean that it's quite hap happy to run a full desktop operating system. On which How case, much is it? Uh, 90 pounds all in for a kit, mm. including the mouse, the an SD card. The, there's a book that comes with it and all sorts. So, yeah, 90 quid all so in. So, you need an audio, audio interface yeah, to go to, into it. To do anything proper, yeah, you would do. I mean, I think it's got a headphone. Oh, no, no, it doesn't have a headphone out. I suppose a lot of people would just use the sound over HDMI with one of these. But it, it's mm -hmm. got two yeah. USB 3 ports on which the uh, old Raspberry Pi, even the Model 3, didn't have. So mm -hmm. you could put an SSD on this as well. <laughs> you could actually run it off an SSD. Apparently they don't oh. they don't boot off an SSD by default, but they can be hacked to do so. So, Right. Oh, Bommel says he needs a proper review of the copper and the ruby. You know what? They've been in the works for so long. I have a ruby and uh, a neo copper, and I keep meaning to do reviews on them. Um, yes, you can get a version of Ubuntu for the Pi 4. You've been able to get a version of Ubuntu for a long time. Um, I've always used Raspbian and Debian because it's close enough that it's the same thing for, for what I do. Uh, one is based off the other. But yes, 
Hello, Scott in the chat. And hello, everybody else in chat. I've seen everybody all filing in. I hope you're all doing well. And take a seat. Yes, take a seat. Get, Make get sure comfy. you're totally different. Mm. <laughs> Make sure you can't touch anyone else. Me and Adam can't touch. Make sure you're sitting in a seat. It's too far away. Virtual Make, plexiglass. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yes. So many emails coming through right now. It's good. Still no sign of Aston Microphone's new microphone. That's not arrived yet. And that was supposed to arrive weeks ago. So hopefully their shipping hasn't been delayed forever. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, there was something I was going to... One of them turned up recently though, right? Because I remember us saying on our stand-up, you said I might could arrive for Aston. That was, no, that was Austrian austrian audio oh yeah. yeah 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 i'm getting confused yeah yeah so i've got a video yeah. out coming out about austrian audio stuff very soon the one about jay-z microphones came out this week uh which funnily enough mm -hmm. was a, a series that i called mike tober first one being released in november very typically me um yeah That's but fine. it's a plan i think next year we're going to have a proper mike tober so you know the inaugurable mike tober wasn't the most organized but it's because i had the idea on probably about the 23rd of october <laughs> yeah it was quite it's quite late in the day yes but it's a theme quite and it's one that i will run with next time next time mm -hmm. and yes like i said i'm gonna have a week off starting tomorrow because desert bus for hope uh, the children's charity event runs from tomorrow and it's something that i get kind of passively involved with every year uh, where it runs for just over a week and they donate millions to uh, making mm -hmm. sure that kids are properly looked after in hospitals which is a pretty mm -hmm. important thing so yeah, yeah yeah definitely it's worth giving a mention too if anyone's not heard of desert bus for hope before go and google that after the podcast uh, because it's very now, very funny in a second tab carry on listening to us and have a look now yeah as long as you don't click away from what we're doing <laughs> Yeah, you can listen to us in the background. You don't need to see us in order to enjoy the content. Mm. Unless we get to the news. When we get to the news, you might have to send back in. So, you know, yeah. just keep your fingers on the alt tab. Okay, it's time for the news. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 can't do, I can't do anything with that right now. My stream deck is dead. Oh, because no. It's, uh, well, it's not dead. It's just oh, the cable's not plugged into this computer because... Yeah, the computer is all the way over there. Like, womp, womp, womp. So, although brilliantly, the um, the KVM for my mouse has started working, which is good because, uh, yeah, that's that made it life a bit easier this week without a, without a uh, a main computer. Mm. What we got then? So, oh, is uh, this the thing you want to buy? Yeah, the tiny little thing from Zoom. Um, I kind of want one of these. Uh, the F two, so it's like a little field recorder. Um, for a mm. long time, we used the H1, uh, the H1N, which is kind of more like a stick shape. And this is a mm -hmm. lot smaller, and it's got nice little updates, like uh, it's got a locking connector, I think, for... Um, for are these what Adam and Avi used for my wedding? No, they used a Sony equivalent. Right. Something, Yeah, something very similar, just by Sony. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it looks like the... Yeah, the microphone screw lock, which is to me quite a big improvement because that means that they can't accidentally get yoinked halfway through. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a Bluetooth version as well, so you can wirelessly start and stop them, check the batteries, do the volumes, all that kind of stuff. Without, If, if they're discreetly mm -hmm. put away in someone's clothes, you don't have to then go rustling around and you can check mm -hmm. you know, whether they're actually running and that kind of thing without you know, disrupting an event, which I think is quite useful. And I'm definitely thinking about having one of these as part of our filming kit because it's the kind of thing that uh, would be very useful on occasion. I mean, a lot of the time I'm in the studio, I've got a proper shotgun mic, but uh, very often these days I find myself in situations where I'm going, uh, shotgun mic's not ideal, what have I got? Just improvising a bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, there's no word on pricing yet, but I would imagine these are not going to be crazy expensive. I mean, look at the size of them. Mm. and apparently on on the bluetooth one you get 14 hours of recording time off two AAA batteries which means if you're using rechargeable triple a's you probably get two and a half hours because that's how it always works but that's better than <laughs> better than nothing something that i don't understand from uh, from zoom is that you can now do 32-bit floating point recording 
despite the fact the microphone can definitely not handle more than 24 bits worth of dynamic range. It's like, <laughs> you're just kind of wasting file space there. It's the typical marketing thing of big number means more good. Mm. Never understood that, but ended up with a heated debate with someone in the comments uh last week about 192 kilohertz recording and like i'm not using this interface it doesn't do 192 kilohertz it's like look if you know anything about intersample distortion you'll know that running that high is actually worse not better it's a marketing thing stop it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah oh poo ninja says yeah 14 hours that's like half of a henning video yeah <laughs> He does like to make extended videos. So yes, that's that. And that's all I have to say about that. So uh, moving on. Um, Apple MacBooks, we talked about these last week. You should have seen Henning's face mm-hmm. when I told him his gear was obsolete. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> Just spent 16 grand on the new Mac Pro. And I was like, sorry, they're not using Intel stuff as of next year. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be I mean, fine. that's not really going to... Yeah, it's, it's... I think... I'd be really wary about going this way yet. I think it's going to be 18 months before it's going to be like stable. I mean, when a new version of OS X comes out, mm. it takes Premiere and people like and, uh, Adobe in general, for instance, mm. at least six months to get their shit together properly. I know they've been prepared for this, yeah. but until it gets into the real world, we don't really know how we're, everyone's going to break it. Like yes. Until you I test in Adobe when you've got <laughs> All, all different types of software running on the same computer. Do you know what I mean? It, it's mm. it's a different environment, so it's different output. But I mean, I was, think, I was thinking earlier when I picked up my um, my iPad Pro that I haven't used in two and a half weeks, and it was still on twenty three percent battery. I was like, this is what the new MacBooks are going to be like, isn't it? Yep. Like the battery, the, 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 they're just going to last forever, and that's going to be awesome. That is going to be awesome. Yeah, I mean, but is it not just an iPad without a touchscreen and the keyboard? Well, that's the big question. I mean, it comes down to philosophy at that point, though, rather than the actual architecture, because that's just that's just software architecture. I mean, like yeah. I was saying about the uh, the the Raspberry Pi, this is ARM based. These have been ARM based for ages, mm-hmm. but I can run a full desktop mm-hmm. operating system on these. Yeah, and if you write drivers for anything, and if you write software for anything, it'll work on a desktop system that's made on ARM. And that's been possible mm. now for almost 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I mean, that's very the thing, much and that's, the Apple philosophy. That's, yeah, and that's why like mouse support on an iPad is only really an accessibility feature mm. because... Right. Ooh, technical Wait, issues. Yeah, no, I just wanted my, my plate. That's what ah. the dishwasher. I wash it myself. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Um, yeah, the mouse is only an ex- accessibility feature on iPads because if it wasn't, if it was integrated properly, what would be the point at this point now? Now that they've put the MacBooks into ARM processors, iPad Pros, um, like the next generation of iPad Pro, like... Mm. Mm, is it really if it had full mouse capability and OS X on it, why would anyone buy the version that has a keyboard attached and no touch screen? I don't know. A bit faster. Yeah. But that that's that's the other thing is that apparently these aren't a bit faster. These are a lot faster. Uh apparently. Yeah, apparently. Which leads us to the next apparently. news article, which is well, a, apparently the iPhone twelve has the A fourteen chip. And the mm-hmm. new laptops have the A14X variant, which is double the speed. If we look at this graph, it goes from... And I know you were saying earlier about Geekbench is very much weighted towards Apple, basically. Um, According to some guy on Reddit, so take that yeah. take that as you will. Sure. Yeah. Um, but, or actually, a thread on yeah. Reddit, let's say, actually. So, there was a few people back yeah. in. So the comparison between, say, the middle here with the Intel chips and on the right, which is the new uh, Apple chips, that that is difficult, hard to confirm, and is probably in one very, you know, very singled out use case scenario. However, the thing that I would be inclined to believe is the vertical, which is that the the X version is just twice as fast 
as the the phone one which i mean it sounds silly but phones and ipads are so much more powerful than people realize that's what i've found recently like yeah. i'm i was doing some video editing in luma fusion on my ipad and mine's an old ipad pro and with 4k footage it was scrubbing at triple speed no problem <laughs> with 4k compressed footage that's a pretty powerful mm. machine Mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah definitely that's the thing under the hood people don't realize just how powerful ipads actually are because we all use one finger at a time and they go at our pace as, as well that soon... that's kind of that is kind of the point though that people are saying and what these tests are based on is it's single core testing mm. it's can you do one thing well like in a real world scenario i've been asked to do multiple things with I don't know thirty thousand different Chrome tabs open and all this. How mm. well is it really gonna put outperform? I'm not gonna say it's not gonna perform, yeah. but um, like again with Macs, the it's a different process, isn't it? The the, the iMac that we've got here, which is like a thirty three hundred series, whatever, mm. still one of the best performing sing on a single core basis, one yeah. of the best performing Intel chips. But you wouldn't you wouldn't rather have that than a nineteen hundred K, would you? Well, that's that's the real question, because what I've come to learn over the last few years about Intel chips or x86 chips is that they're essentially a bloated mess. <laughs> the, the chip design for Intel, it carries 30 years of baggage. Half of that chip is designed to support software that hardly anyone uses, but you can't remove it because if you broke compatibility, people would riot. Things like SSE three and SSE, you know, and old x eighty seven code, which hasn't been used in years, but is still in there for some reason. All these things have to be included on the actual chip, which makes them run hotter, which makes them run less efficiently. With ARM, you can say, "All right, well, we're making our own chips now. You're not going to support any of that stuff, but we never did." So there's no need for backward mm. compatibility with all that. So that's how they're getting these performance measures, I think, is that by throwing everything out. I mean, you know enough about ARM um, to know about risk architecture and what that is, roughly, don't you? Just to explain for... Um, yes, but explain for the viewers. For the viewers, yeah. So x86 is what's called a CISC architecture, which means it can mm -hmm. do almost anything... It's very, very, very versatile, but at the expense of it being relatively slow, because if you ask it to do something weird, it will have to stop and count and do long multiplication and long division and do it all the long way. But you'll get an answer. It will work. It will do whatever you ask of it. Anything weird and wonderful, it can do. But it might take a while. But that's why x86 and Intel and AMD chips are the center of modern computers because you never know what you're going to ask these chips to do could be anything and different people have different requirements you know between gaming computers atms that banks use you know cad machines anything you don't know what people are going to ask which is why x86 is designed that way which makes them big hot relatively inefficient for what they do uh, risk mm -hmm. architectures like ARM, they approach it the other way and they go, no, forget that. We're stripping out everything. But in its place, it's a reduced instruction set. So the, these are the only things that this processor does, but it will do them incredibly fast and incredibly efficiently. And so they've stripped out all the old stuff that... The Intel chips just do just for historical sake, that kind of thing. And so now, right. yeah, so that's why when the Apple ARM chips were kind of new, they didn't do much, which is why apps were very limited. But by clever design and improving on it, and Apple designing their own chips, which is the really clever bit, they've only added things to the processor that are relevant to modern processing. Which is why it's very difficult to compare with something like Geekbench. But if you say, if you go to an x86 processor, like an Intel processor, and go, well, what's the square root of the upside down of the inverse of, of this or whatever? If that Intel chip has a special shortcut or an extension for it, it'll be really quick, which is great. 
If it doesn't, it will still do it, but it'll do it the long way around. Whereas ARM processors don't have all that baggage. They will either give you a yes, I can give you an answer, or no, I can't give you an answer. And if it can't give you an answer, you're out of luck. Tough. <laughs> Which is why it's very different compiling software for ARM architectures because you have to program your apps in a certain way where you can't just rely on 20 year old code you can't rely on shortcuts and laziness which is something Mm. that it's funny to say but especially with programs that have been developed for 20 years or more apparently there's a lot of what's called legacy code in there where it's code where it's like well if it ain't broke don't fix it yeah but this code's 20 years old now and relies on parts of the processor that yes they're still there but it's a vicious cycle. They're only still there because they need it to run your software. Stop it. <laughs> so that's yeah. why that's why people like Adobe, Adobe are a great example of why Photoshop won't be ready until January and it's November now. And they've known about these computers, these architectures for, for months now, if not years, and they're still not ready. It's because if you look at the code of a lot of the Adobe programs, deep down, a lot of it goes back to the 90s or even maybe the 80s. Yeah, Macromedia and stuff as well. Yes. Because that's that's the thing. Three or four companies in one, isn't it? Yes, Adobe bought Macromedia years back, which is why if you've got Photoshop and Illustrator and After Effects and Premiere and all these other programs, they all behave a little bit differently. You ever noticed how like none of the shortcuts match up or none of the menu systems are quite the same? It's because they were originally owned by different companies and they're built on code from Mm -hmm. before the companies were bought. So, yeah. Sorry. So that's the thing that the, the Adobe teams have been sat down by the, the management and said, look, you need to write the basic stuff again from scratch, but new and specifically for things like these risk architectures, which is why I reckon things like Photoshop are going to be blazing fast on the new Macs. Not necessarily because the yeah. Macs are better, yeah. but because the Apple's programmers like have been kicked into touch and made to redo everything from the ground up. Possibly, possibly. I mean, the thing is, whilst it's very, it, it's true what you said. Sometimes, in order when you someone like Adobe, where you've got to roll out mm-hmm. a new version of Photoshop every year, yeah. if the answer to making it faster is just to rewrite code that's already been written, uh, but you'll find that that does get to, does get done because it's like it's the easiest win. It's like, yeah. how can we make this faster? Well, if we rewrite that, it'll be faster and no one needs to actually sit around and like, we don't have to have workshop meetings about figuring out what the next feature is. We just, just rewrite this code because it's crap and make it more efficient. Yeah. Like that, that um, will have been happening as well. So I, I how, how, yeah. how much, yeah, how much legacy code is actually slowing it down? I would be really surprised if that ends up being a major factor, but it, it definitely could be, mm. but I would be surprised. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't say that no code has been improved over the years. That wouldn't be fair. But um, um, there's a, a developer that I know who uh, was telling me an apocryphal tale that only a couple of years ago, Pro Tools still had code in it uh, that had been that was being in the software on Windows, emulated from PowerPC architecture, which is the old pre-Intel <laughs> Max because it was easier for them to just keep that layer running on an emulation than it was to rewrite the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which means that that's why Pro Tools is still massively slow, if that's still in there. And I wouldn't mind betting that that's still in there. Whatever that was, whether it was the way that the internal engine actually works, is actually being uh, on the fly translated from a completely foreign architecture because nobody is being given the time and resources by management to sit down and take however many months it would take to root it out, do it all again, and bug test it all if it's foundational. Because mm. that's the other thing. If something's so critical to how the software works, if you rip that out, you've got to replace it. You've got to bug test it in every possible combination. Yep. With a behemoth of a piece of software like Pro Tools or Photoshop or whatever, is it worth the risk sometimes? So, <laughs> pun intended. True, true story. Yes. True story. So there's a good 
possibility that a lot of stuff, not all stuff, but a lot of programs are probably going to be very efficient on the new Macs because the software is being rewritten from the ground up, including the libraries, the, the, the very foundations. I mean, like, it, like, like I was saying about the, the video editing stuff, using LumaFusion, which if I used Premiere on my laptop to do the same thing, it would be spitting fire out the back. And on my iPad, which is, what, five years old? It's just mm -hmm. chugging yeah. along. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's an original iPad mm -hmm. Pro. It's not even a new one. And it just just flies through because the hardware on those ARM chips has dedicated pieces of hardware, like the video decoding and encoding. I mean, that's mm. the that's the other thing. How how many uh how many different CPU models did Apple announce on launch? One? One. Just one. So there isn't a massive family of processes for people to write code for where they've got to support this case and that case and this case. You can write code for a single thing. And then all Apple have to do from there on is not break that compatibility and make better, faster versions of the exact same thing. And they're onto a winner. Yeah, but the other side of it is... Um... If it's twenty percent faster, it'll be fifty percent more expensive. So, yeah, I mean, I I am certainly not the first to be a, an Apple fanboy, that's for sure, and is widely known. But <laughs> yes, um, yeah, I am you can use from an architecture perspective. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think there's there's definitely something said about okay, maybe we should just throw all this stuff out. But then there's that you do need to accept all the the negative side effects of of that um it's not just uh okay let's just forget about all these old programs mm. um like it does like not having compatibility is a like, backwards compatibility is a pain in the backside yeah so, so but they yeah. have said that like certain things will still work haven't they <clears throat> on launch that they've got a way of essentially em emulating other programs or something i remember them saying mm. like it's, I don't think it's gonna be the case that if you've got like programs that are pre-arm and not just going to not work at all. Yeah, I'm, there is I'm a sure translation layer. Yeah, um, what do they call it? Rosetta. Uh, but uh, everybody's experience of Rosetta One, which is when they went from PowerPC to Intel, was that it is rough at best. It. it, it yeah, that was it, like twenty years ago. Now, though, right? so. It was more like twelve years ago, or was it? No, it was a bit more. Uh, Fifteen years ago. It was a while ago, that's for sure, but the nature of, of yeah, on-the-fly recompilers, they are what they are. If someone's used a clever hack on uh, x86 architecture to make something run quicker, that might not translate very well. <laughs> so that will then rely on the clean code writing of coders, you know, of which there are many. And quick and dirty coders, there are probably as many. So we'll see how yeah. that goes. It's just going to mean, I, it's just going to be such a pain in the arse because there's just now going to be even more of a bridge between Mac and Apple again. Like, mm. yeah. What are they doing around storage? Do you know? Uh, I think it's a giant middle finger. Um, yeah, like. Uh, this computer, I've got yeah. Mac Drive on this for dealing with clients that use Macs, and I've got to try and create NAS storage for everyone to be able to deal with and put hard disk. Ah, rah, 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 rah. Yep. Just use use one file system, please. Why? Yeah, that would be nice. The the other thing, just before I move on, is that apparently these these are relatively relatively powerful. These eight core processors. Um, in the new year, there has been a rumor that there'll be the 20 something inch uh, iMacs that have the 12 core variant. So that should be really interesting to see how that responds. Mm, yeah. Also, yeah, you've either got 8 gig of RAM or 16 gig of RAM, and it's not just solder to the board, it's actually on the chip. So, <laughs> yeah. Yay, Apple. But then that makes more sense to me if it's on the chip, because if you've 
heard of HBM memory, which is what some some graphics cards use, which is where the RAM is literally on top of the chip. The performance is like mm. double because there's no wait time. Mm. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Anywho, yeah. moving on. Next. Uh, so this really caught my eye. Uh, the Rev Generator Mark III. Um, this Ooh. is the new Holy Grail amp for rock and metal guys. Uh, this got announced uh, two days ago, and pre-orders are now open. Uh, it's a four-channel amplifier, just like the previous Generator 120s, uh, but now mm-hmm. it's got an inbuilt load box. It's got the basically a two-notes cap to X inside it. So it's got full stereo output. You don't need to connect it to a cabinet at all. You just turn it on, plug your headphones in, it's all controllable by Bluetooth. It's got four re Is this the channels. second one? The second one they've released with a captor in it? Yes. Uh, I'm like getting Deja Vu. Yeah, kind of. So the last ones, the D20 and the G20 were like that, but they were so much smaller. They kind of mm-hmm. had, they had the two notes technology in them, but they only needed like a 20 watt load. So they could, they, yeah, they were mm-hmm. tiny little lunchbox things, which were great. And I, I really wanted one, but I never ended up getting one. Uh, but this is the flagship. This is the big beast. This is the thing that I would imagine if NAM was still happening this year, this would have been announced at NAM. But for whatever reason, mm-hmm. they've pushed uh, this ahead. So now they're doing pre-orders. And so, yeah, I really, really, really want one of these. Uh, but they are not cheap. They are handmade in great old Canada, uh, mm. old Canada, and all that. Uh, there are two models that have three channels in, which are a bit cheaper, uh, called the hundred P and the hundred R, which have got the P for purple or R for red channel, so like the aggressive or the chunky, chunky. Mm. And then there's the mm-hmm. mother. And so, yeah, you can plug it into a speaker and knock it down to 10 watts as well. So it's not necessarily going to deafen people if you want to actually play with it. Uh, All the two notes, cabs and mics that I make and everybody else makes will be available to be used in there. And yes, I really, really want one. And I might, might, might end up getting one, but no promises. I'm talking to Rev right now to see what we can do. (laughs) <laughs> maybe because this is the sticking point if you are serious serious mm. about tones these are the costs the 120 mark 3 is 3300 us dollars and the three channel variants are 2700 us dollars which is a lot <laughs> okay so justify why it's worth that much well if you're a tube amp nutcase and um, this mm. has there are very few really, really good four channel amps. This has got really clean, clean, a nice crunchy channel, really aggressive metal, and then proper chunky, fuzzy new metal. And it's got basically mm-hmm. a two notes captor inside. They're $600, $700 for one of those. And that's just crammed in there. Mm-hmm. So that's value right there, which means that you can use it at home without having to find a load box and screw around and that kind of thing. Um, you can mm-hmm. store presets on it, which means if you're going to a gig, you can literally have the sounds you want and just flick between them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also send like the sound you want out of the back through an XLR to front house so they don't even need to put a microphone on a cabinet. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it's a real 120 watt amp. So if you want noise, you can have noise, all the noise. So mm. yeah, it's it's... As far as valve amps go, which is technically a dead format, this is state of the art. Yeah. It's a lot of money, though. It is a lot of money. money. Yeah. It's also, to be honest, partly a status symbol. If you can afford Mm. one of these and you can put it on your board, I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, I really, really like the sound of the fourth channel, which is why I have, ripping sound, one of these. That's the Rev G4 Mm -hmm. pedal. It's mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a pedal rather than actual tube stage, so it sounds great, but not quite exactly the same. But yeah, you can mm-hmm. get one of those. I mean, yeah, it's it's the kind of it's a boutique niche market. I mean, why would you pay five or ten thousand pounds for a guitar? It's a similar kind of audience. Mm. 
where you're not just paying for something cranked out of a factory. Every one of these is handmade. And as far as I know as well, you can have the colour custom done, you can have a different kind of front on it, you can have different colours. Uh, there is some custom to that as well. So, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot going on. And they sound incredible. That's kind of the main selling factor beyond all, all of it. Mm -hmm. um, every time I've heard one used on a record, you just go, what is that? And they go, oh, it's the rev generator. And you go, right, okay, cool. I want one of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, they uh, they know cheap. No, so, yeah. that's... Uh... Yeah, that's that's some money. That is some money. So moving that's on cool to some, though. yeah, moving on to something else. Uh the Zvex Bliss factory has been revealed, uh, which is something that's been rumbled and talked about <coughs> for a while. Uh Chase Bliss pedals uh have collaborated with Zvex, that is Zachary Vex. Zvex most well known for the Fuzz Factory pedal, which is basically the uh, Matt Bellamy from Muse sound. Um, if mm -hmm. you if you hear Matt Bellamy making fuzzy sounds, that's a Zvex pedal. They make weird stuff, mm -hmm. and yeah, hmm. actually, fun. Yeah, Ace Man says there might be some used revs up for sale now. I actually saw a Rev Generator Mark II up for sale on Facebook earlier today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that that's the other thing. A lot of people are going to be like taking an upgrade path. <laughs> yeah, but yes. Um, I don't even know what this oh it's like um it's like a fuzz factory but but with everything messed with and it's got I think that's MIDI. Yes, yeah, so you can MIDI control a fuzz factory. That's <laughs> weird. Yeah. And there's another collaboration, Earthquake Devices and Death by Audio. Um, which is called Time Shadows. I had a Death by Audio fuzz war for a while. I absolutely hated it. Uh, and <laughs> Earthquaker devices make some really, really weird stuff. Yes. <laughs> Harpoon Ninja says when he asked Rev about a wet, dry, wet triple power amp model, they just said buy three G20s, which checks out. <laughs> but yeah, these aren't cheap either. That's why these are worth mentioning. Wow. The, the Bliss Fet factory is over three hundred pounds. So what, three hundred and fifty dollars ish plus sales tax for one of these? But this is wow. going to be one of those things where you're going to see them on the second hand market. I reckon way higher because this is a limited thing. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. So the Bliss factory is already sold out. Yeah, that makes sense. So the one that's twice the price is already sold out. <laughs> yeah, so if you want one, tough. Uh, look on Reverb.com for the second-hand market and be prepared to pay a lot of money. <laughs> Moving on. Um, Agonizer. Uh, oh, yeah, so the reason that this caught my eye is that recently a lot more software has been becoming very serious in terms of iOS development, something that I looked at on the channel very early on but kind of stopped chasing because it kind of reached its limit at that point but mm -hmm. yeah times are changing in the last six months and i think it's partly linked to the whole apple silicon mac thing because the two mm -hmm. processes are very similar so if you're writing for one why not write for yep. the other yeah i mean yes yep. you do have to do more work on your ui being touch scalable and all that kind of thing but the actual sound dsp processing part is one and the same so, mm -hmm. yeah, whoever this guy is, and I'm not entirely aware of who Hack Attack Jacob Hack is, uh, he's got a nice bass synth that's just come out from Numerical Audio, and it looks funky, and it probably goes... And, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the kind of thing where I'm experimenting more recently. Um, my keyboard down here oh, has... This is, this is a very old MIDI keyboard... But it's got a little, I don't know if I can get it on camera. There we go. A little dongle in it. Uh, this dongle is, <clears throat> it's got a very silly name. It's called the Widdy Master from CME. <laughs> yeah, Widdy. And every time I see it, I just think, Widdy, Widdy. Um, but yes, the, <laughs> the Widdy Master is wireless MIDI. And it works mm -hmm. really well with iOS. 
doesn't seem to work very well with computers with just, especially Windows computers with just regular Bluetooth right now. Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, it will communicate with iOS really well, which means that I can, without plugging anything in, start playing with crazy iOS synths through Cubasis because Cubasis 3 now uh, has a really robust plugin system that wasn't nearly as mm-hmm. stable before. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I filmed a video recently, which will be going out at some point soon, where I used the Evo 8 with the iPad, and there's a bass plugin called Mammoth that I love that's available. Uh, There was a really nice guitar amp sim there that didn't suck. And now there's some really good synths coming out too. I mean, it's becoming a full-fledged production system now, Mm -hmm. which is very, very interesting. I mean, this bass synth, it's $9.99 iOS plugins seem to be so much cheaper on average than their full desktop counterparts. And the sound is the same. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that fascinates me is the sound is identical because the code has been recompiled, but it does the same thing. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Which brings me to Cubase 11. Which is... Yeah, lots and lots of shiny faders and sliders. Does it come with that monitor? Oh, that'd be nice. Uh, what uh, is that? Let's have a look. I think it's a Dell. Yes. <laughs> Cubase 11, use it properly, Marty says in chat. Have you seen this new course? That new course would be our new course. I'm just going to... This is <laughs> the perfect time for a cheesy segue from our sponsors, us. <laughs> and so... <clears throat> This is our new course on promixacademy.com. The link is down in the description. So if you're you're getting into Cubase 11 and you've got all these wonderful EQs, delays, reverbs, compressors, and don't know quite what to do with them, our course is something you can go and buy that will help you out. So go buy that now. I'm not going to dwell on that too long because that's enough sales talk from me. Uh, But yes, there are some new uh, features. So it's now got ARA2 support, which Reaper's now had for a year. Um, Very Audio 3, which is kind of cool, elastic audio. And unlim... Oh, that's... Sorry, Cubase Elements. Oh, sorry, Cubase Artist gets those and... Hang on. Cubase Artist now has unlimited tracks. So what do you need Cubase Pro for? Hmm. I've never liked the idea of product segmentation like this. Mm. So all, it was always a thorn in my side with Pro Tools that it was like, hey, here's like a cheap version, but if you use more than about four tracks, then we're going to make you pay more. So, mm, yeah. yeah. The, the idea is cool. Uh, apparently there's a new sampler track, which you can slice audio up with somehow. A key editor, and uh, there's new properties in the score editor. Uh, supervision replaces the old oscilloscope with meters and displays. That's cool. Um, I'll just uh, flick onto this. Where are ye? Yeah, that's cool. So you can see new uh, styles of uh, view, which there are already plugins that I have that do that. But the fact that it's available to you now is kind of funky. Uh, so yeah, squasher. Uh, So there's a three-band compressor designed for EDM production. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, so they've put plugins in that I already own from other brands, and they're charging nearly 600 euros. Wait for the video. How much is Reaper? Uh, $60. $60? Yep. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, if you're thinking about buying Cubase Pro, you can buy Reaper and a course on how to be amazing at Reaper for less than the price of Cubase. Yep, and maybe even a couple of specialized plugins for things that you want to do and still have some money left over. Yes. Not that we like don't want you to buy Cubase. If you want to buy Cubase, go buy it. But you know, but we do want you to save to money. Use, use Reaper and use our course. <laughs> How about this? If you send Adam an email with a receipt from the course and a receipt from Reaper, he will recommend five plugins for you for the rest of the price. I'm going to get a load of emails now. 
But yeah, okay. hey, with a load of sales, that's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's a very good point. I'll give you that one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I, I don't know what it's been about this week, but I've had a lot of random emails from people. Like This is something that happens to me on a weekly basis, is I get an email from some very nice person, I'm sure, saying, hey, can you give me some tips for Reaper for this or whatever? And I'm like, no. <laughs> not, <laughs> not that I want to be rude or anything, but I've got limited time in the day, and it's like... If a single person asks me in private to help them out, if it's a friend, of course, I'll help you out. If you're just a complete stranger, I mean no offense, but I'm trying to educate as many people as possible in the small time that I have on this planet. And it's like, I learned a long time ago, and the whole reason I started a YouTube channel was that if I'm talking to people on a one-to-one -one basis, I can really enlighten them one at a time and that's not a very productive rate to educate people why do you suppose professors have classrooms you know it's that's what it's for and then yeah, yeah that's yeah so if if i'm ignoring your emails anybody who's sending me private messages it's not personal <laughs> we do do oh one, you just pay yeah yeah we do one-to-one yeah. -one sessions through patreon mm -hmm. that's the kind so of thing, thing it's not about yeah, and it's not about being uh, greedy and millionaires, like, trying to feed a baby here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're, we're keeping the lights on, you know. It's like, um, I'm, I want to spend time with my family as well as doing this. So if you really, really, really want me to work with you, I will. But give me an incentive to drag me away from family time. <laughs> yeah. All that stuff. It's all going well, and it's all being awesome. It's but yeah, buy Cubase or yeah. don't. Yeah, that's but our buy review. Reaper and buy, buy the course. Or don't. <laughs> 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 buy Cubase or don't. Whatever. I'm not your dad. I'm not a cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's a Reaper course. It's right on the screen. Go buy that. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> right at the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, Cog's Op Synth uh, FM synthesizer looks pretty impressive. It's got. Uh, three octave keyboard and it makes big bwamp noises like FM synths do. Yes, as Henning would say, Ace Man, uh, you can't eat a delay pedal. <laughs> Which um, is a quote from last week because Henning was saying that like companies send him stuff, which is great, but you can't eat the stuff. It's yeah. like, yeah, we, we still have bills to pay. Cool gear is cool, but mm -hmm. you know, we, we still have to keep lights on and eat. So, mm -hmm. yes, you can't eat a delay pedal, although you can sure as hell try. Um, but yes, this synth is uh, apparently simple for an FM synth. I find that kind of hard to believe because, you know, uh, FM synthesis is hard. It's got lots and lots mm -hmm. of knobs. Uh, in fact, it's got a lot less knobs than a lot of FM synths. So they, they have, a, it looks like they've gone some way to simplifying this. I tried programming mm -hmm. an FM synth once and after an hour I just got up and walked off because <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it it can be... The thing about FM synth is it's beautiful until you press the wrong thing and it sounds like a Dalek going through a shredder. Uh, <laughs> it's not like additive synthesis where you've got nice sine waves and if you add an extra bit it just sounds nicer or just a little bit too much and just back it off a bit and it's nice that's additive synth fm synth you press the wrong button and it goes from ding to <laughs> very quickly <laughs> yeah so you really really need to know what you're doing with fm synth which i suppose is why they've come up with this i mean i'm generally against preset surfing but with things like fm synths i do tend to preset surf a little bit and then tweak from there because to get to a nice point with an FM synth, yeah, you gotta know what you're doing. And mm. I don't. <laughs> and I've tried. <laughs> but yeah, it takes a special kind of nerd to to program FM synth. And yeah. Wow, I'm, that's coming from you. Oh, oh. Ooh, yeah, this is like top tier nerdery FM synth. This is like the a small cabal of shady uh, you know, <laughs> FM synth, synth programmers, nerds. yeah. <laughs> the cabal of synth programmers. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, 
Yes. I mean, I'm sure they're terrifying. Yes, absolutely. They will. Uh, if you upset them, they will make horrible sounds at you, which is actually very easy for them to do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, last but not least, it's time for Behringer Corner, and we've actually got something interesting. So this is the Behringer okay. Flow 8. Uh, this looks Ooh. genuinely interesting to me. This is a podcasting mm. style mixer. If you look at the yeah. front of it, there are almost no controls. Um, there's an app. Yeah. And so on the app, you can control things like EQ, compression on every source. So if you've got several people for a mm. podcast in the same room, you can actually do a fairly comprehensive podcast style mix. It's got a couple of effects sends and things and it's relatively inexpensive at 213 pounds 229 mm -hmm. euros or probably what 240 dollars and yeah it's got one knob on the front uh, so i'm i'm sure you could cycle through all the settings if you really need to get to something and you don't have the app open uh, as mm -hmm. danny says in chat hit the like button <clears throat> um, anyway yes um yeah, it looks really. Uh, they they finally brought something it's, out that competes. Oh, I was going to say the six faders. It's is that two masters jerking and then the four for each of the inputs. No, it's got extra inputs. Uh, I don't know if they're on the back or if that's these two here. If they're stereo inputs, it's got four microphone preamps for the first four channels. Mm. But then I think, I mean, depend if you're using it for podcasting, that might be just like an extra sound source like a Skype call in or like, sound effects background music mm -hmm. I don't know uh, but yeah it's got 60 mil faders on it which is not bad for a little thing and yeah Bluetooth audio connectivity is provided so I wonder if you've got a call on a, a phone into a podcast where whether it could transmit the audio into the podcast via bluetooth that could mm, be that could be really useful i've seen that done uh with the rode podcaster pro recently which is a very capable piece of kit but costs significantly mm -hmm. more uh but yeah um my mate john brown from monuments has a podcaster pro because he does a weekly podcast with some of the biggest guitarists in the world like he's had the guys from devil driver recently angel vivaldi um kiko from megadeth yeah he's had some serious names on in the last few weeks and he uses this podcaster pro to mix him al levy who's in america the person who's on the podcast from wherever in the world they are background music and everything and he does it all live in front of him on this desk and it mm. saves it to like a 12 channel wave file yeah very very powerful and it's got usb audio out as well which is really good so yeah, Behringer Corner's got something interesting this week. And I think of the name, huh. I, I, I was looking at it yesterday, the other podcast mixer that streamers use. Because that, cause that outprices that as well. I can't remember the name of it now. Oh, I don't know, because there's... Often. Zoom have probably got a very oh, similar it. often. GoXLR, that's it. Oh, the GoXLR, yes. Isn't that from TC Electronics? TC Hellison. Yeah, TC Helicon. Guess who owns yeah. them? Behringer? Yep. <laughs> yeah, so Behringer yeah. now have yeah. the 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 TC yes, the version. Yeah, GoXLR only has one XLR input though, and it's five hundred quid. Yeah, there's a few well, there's a few different variants of the GoXLR now, I believe. Uh because there's the GoXLR yeah, Mini. Yeah, so the GoXLR looks like it just fits a slightly different audience. Yeah, it's more of a streamer audience than a podcaster. Yeah, I think really because you control other th like the sliders are designed to control your programs and stuff, mm. which I really like. Well, the other thing that um, really interests me about the Flow Eight is it's like a, a, apparently it's like a tiny version of the new Behringer Wing. Like if you're a solo artist and you go out and play a show, which obviously right now is not very relevant, but could be very soon. Uh, you can have mm. things like EQ profiles and compression and everything already saved in in there. So when you turn up at a show, you turn it on, you plug in and you go. 
and you don't need mm-hmm. a huge like you know the behringer x air units which can be much more chunky and can be more expensive and don't have any physical mm-hmm. controls so i mean if i was a a guitar a acoustic guitar singer in the corner of a, a a little like restaurant or whatever if i had one of these and i had it all programmed so it sounds good but if i had the volume right next to me <clears throat> in between songs or at the end of a song or if something needs changing i could be playing i can just reach over and change it i think that's a really good Mm. kind of compromise between the two especially with the inbuilt effects if it's got reverb and something else inbuilt yeah it says two effects processors (coughs) multi-band graphic over the main inputs actually yeah bluetooth audio would be really good for that kind of person as well because instead of your phone if you connect it to i don't know like a you know ipod shuffle or whatever the hell whatever or like an old iphone i don't know that's got spotify on it you can then leave that tucked away under the mixer while you go off and have a break Mm -hmm. and you're not worrying about forgetting this cable and that cable or worrying about your cable failing which has happened so many times on shows it's almost funny Whenever I used to do live sound at venues, I always kept several different types of cables that could connect something like a phone to a sound system handy because every week without fail, one of the artists would go, oh, my cable's broken or I can't find my cable or one variation or another. (coughs) And yeah, having that and just going, right, hit Bluetooth, shut up. (laughs) It'd be very useful. (laughs) But yeah, that was Behringer Corner. <laughs> Maybe that should be our new Behringer Corner thing. <laughs> Just get something to transcribe that into a, a like a, a xylophone sound. <laughs> but your side on one side and my side on the other. That would sound horrible. I love it. <laughs> I'm in. I do know a guy called Levi Clay who could probably transcribe that for me. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, I know this is horrible. Please transcribe, thanks. <laughs> so yeah, um, any questions from the audience? Because it's been, it's been a week. Let's just have a quick scoot through because everything has been going on. It's been a busy chat. Yeah, well done everybody for being a, a community. This is good. I can see a lot of likes on there. Um, well done. Thank you very much. Good job, everybody. Um, I will be back on Sunday as well. Just a little announcement now, even though I said I'm having a week off, uh, typical workaholic, I'll be back Sunday to finish off those Mischfeld mixes. Um, but that will be a leisurely, uh, nice paced thing, probably during the day. So there's no stress nice relaxed thing and i'll probably tie in desert bus for hope somehow which is the annual charity that i watch and am involved in i might just have that in the corner and give them a shout out uh because that's the kind of thing that that i like to do it's funny and it's charity although they are all doing it from home this year which is going to be a bit weird yeah it's a bit strange wasn't it Mm. But yeah, they've, they've got a setup already that they did a tech test with where they can have at least six people on the screen at once already. So it's all, yeah, coming together. So they've got some seriously powerful um, capture computers and overlays and they're probably harnessing the power of Zoom, I would have thought. <laughs> but yeah, it's always a hell of an operation when they do it. Uh, whether it's in person I mean in person last year I think they had something like a 24 camera rig yeah insane yeah but it's just a production that gets bigger and bigger every year yeah and it's a great course as well absolutely yeah Uh, the chat has crashed or everybody's decided to hold their breath all at once (gasps) yes uh yeah I'm trying to think what else is worth mentioning because i'm very very tired which is why i've decided to have a few days off uh but i'm gonna have fun playing with this pie <laughs> and relax ah. i mean before i get into the production stuff my first thought is i'm gonna get uh into seeing how how smoothly it can emulate a dreamcast because i was having okay. some okay 
just just because um i was emulating with retro pi on the pi 3 and playing sonic adventure 1 which is my favorite don't at me um <laughs> it was a stuttery <laughs> mess <coughs> Oh yeah, Major Prometheus says Ableton Live uh, 11. I think it's 11 or 12, the new one that's coming out. has finally got comps, so like vocal comps. Finally, they're actually making it a serious production thing. Yay. Yay. Enforced holidays? No, not enforced holidays. Um, It's not a family holiday like the last holiday was. This is literally me saying, right, I'm having a week off. <laughs> And I'm going to work mm -hmm. a lot during that week, but I'm going to pretend it's a week off and that'll make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you, uh, you just have a little bit of a break anyway, mate. Yeah. I mean, I've been at this for several months now, so yeah, it's going to be mm -hmm. nice to just, just watch a charity stream for a bit and probably have my laptop next to me and do a little bit here, a little bit there, but not like chain myself to a desk for a bit. Mm -hmm. but yeah i do want to get all these new cabs out on the two note store before da -da 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 black friday because that's coming up very Ooh. soon yes so we're now going to have two courses that are up on pro mix academy i would imagine there'll be some black friday deal but i don't know can't confirm um i actually don't know um there's all the cabs that we've got on the two note store and more coming uh, so at that point, I believe I will have 52 cabinets on the two-note store. <laughs> Not counting the 40 from Victory. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, two-notes literally just celebrated having 400 cabinets on the store, uh, which means that if I keep on at this rate, it won't be long before I have 25% of the two-note store. <laughs> <laughs> or, or have at least captured them yeah because that would bring the count to 92 out of 410 so yeah i just need to find some more cabinets and capture them there's a lot of behringer stuff on uh pre-order on scan at the moment pre-order huh yeah okay yeah, a lot what do you mean on pre-order? As in, you can't buy them yet. Oh, right, okay. I'm just uh, in the digital mix section. Uh, I don't know whether it's just because they're now out of stock, but usually they say when they're out of stock. Mm. Uh, Marcy says, during holiday, no unboxing Zillas. Um, good question. I am planning to be in the studio tomorrow. Uh, to round out these two notes captures before I put my feet up. So if I can get in super early, I'll do a, a nice unboxing thing. I've still not released the up October unboxing yet, so I'll do that probably tomorrow. Uh, and, oh yeah, if I had 25% of stock in the two notes company, that'd be lovely. That would be nice, but alas, no. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, I will try and film unboxing the Zillas and the Celestian speakers and anything else that turns up tomorrow. Uh, if I've timed it right, uh, I'll keep an ear out for the door. I should have a keyboard coming from Archuria, which I'm very excited about. Ooh. Yes, their Key Lab 88 Mark II, the top of the range, the big fat chunky thing. The keyboard to end all keyboards with all the doof doofs and the whizzle whizzles. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah i made one video which i've given to the patrons on patreon with um archuria synths which sounded epic and i was really happy with it and mm -hmm. so i got in contact with archuria and so i'm making more videos like that i'm going to release that video probably next week because everything's done the thumbnails ready so that's going out soon and so the guys at archuria were like yeah that's great that's not an archuria keyboard though can we do something about that? So I'm not getting a freebie, but we worked something out. So yeah, I'm okay. getting their full kind of thing. That's his official name. <laughs> yeah. And like I'm it. looking forward to using those twiddly controls to make some really cool sounds. Yes. Nice. 
and then yeah when i've had my week off it's back to the grindstone because i'll be probably at that point scripting and trying to film the uh <clears throat> the big celestian speaker video mm-hmm. and wrapping up all the other stuff i've got before christmas uh because that's gonna happen in about a week and a half i know i can't believe it's right <clears throat> oh god yeah i can't believe it's november <laughs> 10 days ago 11 days ago <laughs> yeah it's just blah blah indeed yes so yes cool. thank you everybody for for watching i have got lots and lots to do and i'm sure liam has as well but it's been an absolute pleasure and so we'll bid you all adieu and like i said i'm having a, a quote-unquote week off but you will probably see as many videos on the channel if not more because i have a lot ready to go now to, to cover for me <laughs> so i'll see you all <laughs> very soon in fact <clears throat> i'll see you all on sunday I will post uh, as soon as I can with the actual uh, like video preview so you know what time it is. But I think it's going to be afternoon. Uh, so we're going to get through uh, mixing the tracks that we did the reamping on that sounded fantastic. Oh, that reminds me. Um, I do have one more thing in the house that that just turned up and it's a modifier for a JCM 800 uh, from George Lynch. Ooh. Yes. Uh, so yeah that arrived from legendary tones i had to pay import on that i was slightly miffed um but yeah um jcm 800s don't have that much gain so it's the thing that you take out a tube you put this thing in and it's got two tubes so then you've got more (laughs) tubes it is literally the tube equivalent of one of those ice creams that's got two heads (laughs) yeah like a twin (laughs) ice cream yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome yeah it's so yeah at some point somebody looked at, at uh, the marshall lamp and went this has only got three tubes in it i want more tubes how do i do this <laughs> boop <laughs> and made a thing that had you know yeah it's like doof, more tubes so that's going to be fun to make a video on but the actual amp is right here uh down in front of me uh, I've been doing reamping from home because we're technically in a national lockdown. So I've been trying my best not to travel wherever possible. And so I've mm-hmm. got a, a, an office full of stuff. And so, yeah, we're going to mix our results from last Sunday. If you haven't seen the last Mick Mischfeld uh, reamping stream from Sunday, check that out. And then I'll see you all next Sunday to finish that job. So, yes. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you very shortly. Goodbye! Bye, everyone. (laughs) See you soon. Hey, everyone. That might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there.